Hi everyone, it's Dr. Romani. Now many people may not know that November is Family Court Awareness Month and this matters to everyone who is, or anyone really, who has experienced narcissistically abusive custody battles, divorces, and post-separation abuse. For decades, family court systems have remained unseeing, unacknowledging, and unaware of high-conflict antagonistic personality styles such as narcissism and unknowing of dynamics such as gaslighting and coercive control and the impact of narcissistic abuse on partners and children. Anyone who has ever interacted or intersected with the family court system in a divorce with an antagonistic person knows the systemic failings and betrayals of the family court system all too well. The movement around Family Court Awareness Month is still developing and is receiving increased support from elected officials around the United States and from advocacy groups of all kinds, including California Protective Parents Association, the Center for Judicial Excellence, the National Family Violence Law Center at GW Law, Movement of Mothers, and the Court Said USA. The numbers on this and the need for family court awareness are real and painful. Since 2008, there have been over 800 documented murders of children by separating or divorced parents or caregivers. And the Center for Judicial Excellence estimates that 111 of those murders were preventable, reflecting failures in the family court system, such as rejection of the other parent's request for protection. Obviously, murder is the most extreme of outcomes in these kinds of high-conflict divorce situations. But what we see far more often is the harm that comes to children who are forced into unhealthy custody situations despite the documentation being provided by parents showing the challenges a child is having with the narcissistic or antagonistic parent. The court systems and the many people who participate in them, custody evaluators, guardians ad litem, judges, mediators, attorneys, it is imperative that they start understanding this. The most common refrain that often rings out from the halls of courts and mediators' office is that there's two sides to every story. I don't buy that when it comes to safety. In the past few months, I have already shared with you new research out of Ohio State showing that narcissistic personality is consistently associated with aggression. The psychology of narcissism and the associated vindictiveness, most pointedly associated with narcissism, means that the best interest of the child is too often ignored in these divorces in favor of the narcissistic person's muscling the court system and gaming the players in that system to win. As a vindictive play against the former partner, no matter how much harm, it does to the children. Family court systems have for too long been far more interested in the rights of the parents than with the protection of the child or the children involved. The well-being, safety, and welfare of the child kind of starts to feel like an afterthought. And in the case of high conflict divorces, when this is an afterthought, the risk of harm is very high. The fact is, family court systems are overburdened, and the concern with speed of processing these cases and getting these cases through quif quickly often misses the nuanced and difficult conversations about the dynamics underlying the divorces. These are systems that are more ready to pathologize and blame the parent who has already been so broken down by enduring antagonistic or narcissistic abuse for years 
than to take a hard look at the harm being brought to a child, not only by a high conflict parent, but by the nature of the proceedings. And because in many divorces, the narcissistic parent is often more well resourced, they are often in a position to retain combative legal teams designed to continue to dismantle the other parent, a parent who is already carrying years of psychological burden secondary to narcissistic abuse. This channel, in my attempts to educating people about narcissism and people educating parents, and maybe even people educating judges and attorneys, while it is important, is no substitute for systemic change. Like I said, this isn't even as simple as educating the judges and any of the players in a family court system. This is about changes in legislation. California and Hawaii have both brought coercive control laws onto the books. It's the first step, 48 states to go. The current models and policies of family court are not informed by the science, the science of trauma, of relational abuse, of domestic violence, of intergenerational trauma, of complex trauma. This isn't about educating individuals. It's really about changing policy. And it's also about changing attitudes. The oppressive nature of systems such as family court means that there is an almost a parallel process of narcissistic abuse that a person may endure. There's the original abuse of the narcissistic relationship and then the unempathic, invalidating conduct of the court. This sort of obsession with parental rights means that we miss the children's rights to a healthy and safe childhood. Personally, I believe that children's rights should always outweigh adult rights. Psychological, physical, and social development in childhood is more impactful for the lifespan and the experiences of childhood set patterns that impact a lifetime. Preserving a child's sense of well-being during that window will pay lifetime dividends. The children need to take priority. So to all of those who have walked through the challenges of a high conflict and antagonistic divorce and custody battle, I hope that this channel is one of the places where you are not gaslighted and reminded that the struggle is real and it keeps happening, sometimes with tragic consequences. Let November, Family Court Awareness Month, be a time when you reach out to your representatives and ask for real judicial reform. Even though it is important to bring change to one person at a time, something I try to do on a daily basis, court reform has to be more sweeping than that. Now for more information on this, please click on the links in the video notes. And thank you again.